if they were already dead, what good did it do? Well, they must have done some good. It must have been for a reason. It must have been some opportunity. But as far as being amongst the saved, receive Jesus Christ in his life, that's another story. Well, and that's another subject. Well, we are talking about being born again. And that will illustrate what an important class of people you belong to to be born again. To be saved. You are an elite, special, privileged class. You may be the most despised, discriminated, hated class of people in this world, as are most hippies and young people and uh, real Christians of our type. But there you're going to be on the top of the heap. You're going to be last here. But over there you're going to be first. And a lot of the guys that are first here are going to be shining shoes in the basement over there. If they have any shoes. Sun shall shine as the stars. Turn many rests. Others will be raised to everlasting shame and contempt. Well, that's true. It'll have to be shame throughout all eternity, and everybody will look at you with contempt, even if you're saved, even if you're in a heavenly city. But still, you're going to be happy because you're going to be thankful you're there at all. Amen. But you're going to be a little ashamed you didn't do what you should have done for the Lord. And others are going to have some contempt for you because you failed God. But if you're saved, you're saved, and that's it. Period. Praise God. Hallelujah. You're born, you're born, that's it, period. You can't fall back in again. That's it, you've had it. You're in this cold, cruel world. And there's no turning back. Thank you, Jesus. You know, saw the prophets in the Bible wish they could go back. Amen. The first of the day they were born. Before Jeremiah had that, that tough time, he was sorry he'd ever been born. Always me, my mother was born me a man yeah. of strife, a man of contention. You go there. That was easy. It's not easy to have to preach such a message. Born again, though. You can't go back. You're here. But you can go forward. You can be born again. Praise God. And that is a spiritual operation which is completely computerized by the Lord, programmed by God. All you have to do is press the button of faith and receive Christ. And immediately he starts rewiring your mind and all the nervous ganglia and all your former responses and all your former reactions and all your former relay switches that went click, click, click in a certain direction. Every time you saw one of those bikinis, your head snapped around. Well, maybe it still snaps around to admire the wonders of God's creation. In a new spirit with a clean mind. A little different attitude. Amen? Amen. The difference. There's a difference. Because God's got you rewired, transformed. He's hooked up his big transformer, the Holy Spirit, and given you a shot of juice you'll never forget. Hallelujah. So you are so high on the Holy Ghost, you never come down. Yeah. First, born of what? And of the Spirit. So when he says born of water, he's speaking of the first part of the sixth verse, which is born of what? The flesh. The birth which is born of water is the birth of the flesh. That's the way you were born. Every one of us were born that way. Man that is born of woman. Every one of us came to this world that way. Isn't that marvelous? Even old, mean, ranting, raving, screaming, yelling Uncle Dave. And I probably came into this world screaming. 
I don't like the system. I don't like the world the way it is. I want a revolution. Boy, Jesus! I don't know whether I was born holding up three fingers or not, but anyway. <laughs> I think I was born with the idea of wanting to change the world. Because my mother had dedicated me to that purpose before I was born. You believe in prenatal influence? Well, I'll tell you, God can do it. He did it for Jacob with the cattle. He made a deal with his old crooked father-in-law Laban. He finally met a crook that was crooked than he was. And that was pretty crooked. Amen. Jacob the deceiver, Jacob the supplanter, had to go to school under a crook that was even crookeder than he was for 21 years before he finally got broken down to where God could use him. And he made a deal with his father-in-law. Now, you can have all the solid-colored cattle that are born. I'll take all the streaked and speckled and uh, uh, ringed and so on. And then the Lord let him, I don't know if God actually told him how it was, but he put out rods that were cut and striped and everything in front of the cattle down at the water holes where they conceived, where the, uh, well, if you've been on the farm, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Amen. And, uh, glad heads here. God bless you farmers. And uh, I don't know whether it had any effect on them looking at those rods or not, but practically all the cattle that got born were streaked and speckled and ringed and spotted. And after a few years, Jacob was getting all the cattle. The old cattle were dying off, and Laban didn't have hardly anything. <laughs> God was on his side. He was getting the best of the deal. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, I believe in prenatal influence. My mother said she went, she most of all, first of all, dedicated me to the Lord. Said, Lord, I dedicate this child to your service. I'm consecrating him to you to serve you. And I later received a prophecy years <coughs> later said that I was filled with the Holy Ghost and faith from my mother's womb. And now, uh, when I first heard that, I wondered, Lord, is that possible? I never heard of anybody being filled with the Holy Ghost from the mother's womb. But then I did think of a scripture. The Lord brought it to me. It's possible. There was a man. Who was he? John the Baptist. John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. Now, I'm not John the Baptist. And we're probably not the only two that ever happened to. But when God is going to call somebody special for a special work, he starts from scratch, from the beginning, even before they're born, to get them ready for the job. Amen. Praise God. That's probably what it is with you. You may not have been filled with the Holy Ghost from your mother's womb, as I was, but that's the way God did it in my case. And faith. I can never remember the time I didn't believe. I can't understand anybody that doesn't believe. It's not hard for me to believe, it's hard for me not uh, to unbelieve. I, I, it's hard for me to doubt. I just know God's going to do that. That's all. Why worry? Praise the Lord. I just know everything's going to be all right. Why are my trials and troubles? I confessed one to you the other night when I felt a little kind of nostalgic and homesick and my whole natural family leaving me. Go south on an important mission. So the Lord told me that you are my children. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise Who are my children? In the doth do the will of God. Praise God. He said even more than that, but I can't tell you the rest. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> well, so he's talking about two births, one of the flesh, and which is one of the spirit of spirit. So when you're with some guy, you've asked him if he was born again, he doesn't know about it, now you're explaining the chapter to him, see? But then you have to learn how to read upside down because you're making him read it. So you've got to point the verses. That's another time it's good to know the number in case you have a tired trouble reading upside down. Well, now, what does this say? And you say, well, now, what does that next verse say? Read it. Get them to read it. Because eye gate is much more effective than ear gate. Do you remember about 80% of what you see? 
you only remember about 40% of what you hear, which means eye gate is twice as effective. A hundred percent more fruitful. A hundred percent more. Double. So if you get them to read it, they'll remember it twice as long, or twice as apt to remember it as if you just quoted to them. You get them to see it with their own eyes. Besides, that takes you out of the way as a target for their objections, and then they're going to have to argue with God because they're reading it right straight from God's Word, the Bible. Oh, I don't know anything, but this, all I know is what God says. Here's what He says. You want to argue with somebody, you argue with God, not yeah. me. I don't know anything. This is just God's Word. Hmm. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. And you read it upside down, try it. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Now it's a mystery, right? Amen. Can you read that upside down? Yes. Yeah. Not easy. It's a mystery. It's a mystery how God does it. We don't know. It's by His Spirit. But if you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, He does it. He immediately starts rewiring you and transforming your mind, making you different. Praise God. So glad your parents came by. That was sweet. Mm -hmm. I thought they were mighty sweet. I thought that was wonderful for them to come. And uh, did they take back the yarmulke? Or did they still have it? Well, now, how about that? Well, you know, every time I go to Jewish synagogue, of course, I have to wear a yarmulke. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> ah, I really look good, huh? <laughs> <laughs> So, born again. Very important. You think I look natural? Wow, look Jewish? Look at this boy. <laughs> Oh, he's not Jewish. I never saw one. <laughs> looks like he stepped right out of the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> All these years have been trying to tell me he's German. Hey, he's a German Jew if I ever saw one. Doesn't listen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we don't know just how the Lord does it. He does it by a miracle. But he rewires you, you're born again, you're changed, new man, new girl, old things pass away, all things become new, you don't have the same desires, you know, oh, you have temptations, you love maybe the same temptations, but uh, they don't succeed like they used to, right? Right. You, the birds may fly over your head, but you don't have to let them build a nest in your hair. Amen. That's right. The devil even tempted Jesus. But he rebuked him and resisted it. Instead of yielding to him like you used to. So things are different now. You're still human. You still have some of the same temptations and feelings and desires. But now you have victory. You're stronger than you used to be. You have the Spirit of God. Right? That's right. And he's even removed some of those desires where you don't even have them anymore. Praise you know? God. Thank you. Praise God. Mm. Sometimes it lets you be tested and tempted with some of the same things to make you strong, to resist, and appreciate the battles of others. But if you can't take it, he just removes it sometimes. I've had some people delivered from smoking, but they always had a battle about it. Others got just removed completely and they never had another struggle. Liquor the same and other things the same. But you don't have to let it do a mess in your hair. You know, it flies overhead keep batting it away with the, with the scripture keep socking it away with the word how did Jesus fight the devil? the word go to scripture it's written so that is the mystery that's the mystery and he finally winds up the ninth verse shows you how the Oh, what a stupid idiot this guy Nicodemus was, in spite of him being such a smart doctor of the law. He didn't even know how to be saved. Can you read it upside down? Let me hear somebody read it upside down. 
He's going to learn how to read upside down. He's going to witness. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Go ahead with the next verse. I said, go ahead with the next verse. Very good. Jesus answered and said unto them, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Wow. Think of that. Here he was a teacher. He was a teacher. And he didn't even know. He was a teacher of the Bible. Didn't know even know how to be saved. You're going to have to learn how to read like that if you're going to really witness right because you've got to show it to them and get them to read it. Sometimes you got to give them a lot of encouragement to read. Now, what does that say? See? And give them the verse. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, well, if they tell you they can't read, well, all right. Help them along. But not very many people like that to me. Have them along. I take a verse and show it like that. And then you get down, find it, to the 16th verse. And a good way to... Tell him now, what does that say? You get him to read it. You say, well, how am I going to be born again? What am I going to do? How am I going to let the Holy Spirit have this, do this thing to me? Anyhow, I want to be born again. I want to make sure I'm saved. It says here, I'm not even going to see the kingdom of God. I'm not going to go to heaven. Anything about not born again. Hurry up. Tell me how to do it. How to get there. <laughs> so you get him 16 verse, right? Can you read it upside down? Oh, you don't know it well enough that you can quote it from memory. Here's the way I do it. I say, well, now it says here, for God to love the world. You believe in God? Sure. Well, He loved the world. Who's that? That's you. Right? Okay. And then I ask them, go ahead, read the next phrase. That He gave. Go ahead. You read it. I'm getting you. See, I'm witnessing to you. Who's that? Jesus. Jesus. You stop and you say, now who's that? He gave His only son. Jesus. That whosoever, who's that? That's too general. Does that mean you? Right, that means you. That means you. And put their name in there. I'll say now, uh, what's your name? Your name's Dan? Okay. That is Dan. Believe in me. Go ahead. Do not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Believe us in him. Should not perish. Not perish, what's that mean? You won't go to hell. But I have everlasting life. What's that mean? You go to heaven. I mean, putting it in simple terms, they understand. You're going to go to heaven. Actually, heaven's going to come to you. But uh, that's another issue. Well, you go to heaven for a while. You go to heaven with Jesus. And if you die before Jesus comes, you're going to go to heaven with him now. Until he comes back. But eventually, heaven's going to be right here on earth. Mm. Heaven on earth! Yeah. Heaven came down. That's the fact. You sing an old chorus. Heaven came down. And glory filled my soul. Heaven's going to be here on earth. Hallelujah. Of course, it's going to be a new earth. Thank and God. a new heaven. Amen. And a new city. Amen. It's going to be a wallop of loser of a city. 15, miles no, 1,500 miles long. 1,500 miles wide. That's about half as big as the United States. 1,500 miles wide and 1,500 miles high. 1,500 miles high. That's about twice as high as most of the astronauts uh, fly in orbit when they're orbiting around the Earth. So apparently it's going to have to be a little air conditioned up there. <laughs> Pressurized or something? What? No. You'll have supernatural resurrection bodies that don't need air. You can fly anywhere. You can take off through space. Take off through space. With the speed of thought. Huh? Amen. You're going to have a body like his, glorified body. You'll be like the angels of God. There's your scripture. And the angels of God can fly around through the universe. They can go to the speed of thought, obey the commandments of God right now. And Jesus was able to materialize and dematerialize, appear and disappear, walk through walls, lock doors, walk in the water, all kinds of things. 
sit down and eat and drink wine with them if she wanted to or didn't have to if she didn't want to. A space man for Jesus. Amen? Mm -hmm. Space man for, for Jesus! Praise God. You used to enjoy Buck Rogers and Superman? You're going to do better things than Superman ever did. That's peanut compared to what you'll be able to do. Mm -hmm. You're going to be uh, an angel of God and be able to do anything. Ed? I feel kind of like uh, a Martian now when I walk down the streets of Montreal. Hallelujah. Sometimes you get a little sample of it in advance. Yeah. You walk around and it's just... Peter walked in the water. Now, he didn't have his transformed resurrection body yet. Amen. But once in a while God gives you a little sample of the resurrection. Yeah. Healing is a sample of the resurrection. Faith to heaven. Right. Spiritual strength is a sample of the resurrection. Uh -huh. Right? Miracle working power is a sample of the re resurrection. You're getting a little sample of what it's going to be like in the kingdom, the heavenly kingdom. Praise God. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? Well, that's what it is to have salvation. That's, of course, that's just salvation. That's just salvation. Now we're getting into the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit. That's something much more important, even. Well, of course, it's very important to be saved, but more important to have the Holy Spirit and be filled with power so you can not just save yourself, but others. Praise God. So that you can shine like the stars and not be shining shoes in the basement. So you can shine like the stars and be glorified and not just be raised to everlasting shame and contempt That's right. so that your works will endure like gold and silver that goes through the fire the souls you won the folks you led to the Lord all those gold and silver that goes through the fire the souls you won the folks you led to the Lord all that's the greatest thing in the world you're going to see them over there yeah. Thank you. that's the only thing you can take with you yeah, the rest you can't take it with you. But the souls you won for the Lord will be your eternal dividends. Eternal reward. That'll be the happiest thing you receive over there. Is to meet the ones you led to the Lord. Amen. Being able to disappear and disappear and appear and go through walls and fly with the speed of thought isn't going to be make you half as happy as to see. Hi there. Yeah. Wow. Did I meet you on the streets of Montreal? Yeah. Talking about Jesus? Wow, here you are, hallelujah! Wow, That's going to be the biggest thing in the world. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, not these streets, man, those old dirty streets in Montreal. Look at this gold. <laughs> not that old dirty gold man uses either, but crystal gold. You can even see through transparent gold. Ed? Can a person be filled with a spirit? Son, when you see I'm inspired, you should never interrupt me. <laughs> That's on the same subject. Go ahead, right, finish it up. You've broken the spell now. Okay. Well, I, I wanted to ask. Sometimes we have a question, jot down the question, and wait till I'm through it, or through the thought at least, and then ask it. I was ask you about Can a person be filled with the Spirit, then what? Can a person be filled with the Spirit if they haven't received Jesus? Well, the Spirit of God can take over anybody temporarily now Saul was saved of course but he was very disobedient but there were times when he was filled with the spirit of God and he stripped off all his clothes and lay down naked and prophesied As we're not told what he prophesied but probably God was prophesying his own demise because when Saul was killed in the battle not long after that he and his sons were stripped and their heads cut off and they were pinned to the wall of the city with spears as a lesson to the others. Stripped naked. So he was probably prophesying his death. And he stripped off his clothes and lay down naked and prophesied all day. He said, well, is Saul the prophets? Not knowing him, no, he was the king. But he was giving an illustrated message of what was going to happen to him. Oh, the high priest also prophesied about Christ. Yes, the high priest said something by the Spirit of God. 
God's Spirit can do anything. God's Spirit can do anything. But I wouldn't say that the high priest was filled with the Holy Ghost. He certainly didn't retain him, if so, because he participated in the crucifixion of Christ, yes. What? A person, can a person receive the baptism without having received salvation? No, of course not. How can God fill an unclean vessel? How can he fill a vessel that's not been washed by the blood of Christ? I don't believe this doctrine that's becoming popular today, that one of these days the whole world is going to be filled with the Spirit of God. They take and misuse that verse in the second chapter of Acts. They uh, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And he means the general run of Christians, all the believers, all the folks that That's right. uh, everybody that will have him. He's poured out today. He's given today, but not all Christians have him. So how could you say that day's going to come when everybody's going to have him? That's ridiculous. What it means is distinguished there is that in the Old Testament days. Only who had him? Prophets. Prophets, Prophets, priests, kings, special people. He was only available to special people for special jobs. Today, who can have him today? <coughs> Anyone that loves Jesus. Anyone that belongs to him. Praise the Lord. <coughs> well, we started on this business of talents. We got on to salvation. And having a little water. If you're saved, you got some. You get into heaven even if your works are burned. Good ain't in trouble. By the skin of your teeth. And uh, be just a pure gratis guest there, saved by grace through faith, that not yourself to get to God, not a works less than the man should boast. And have no works at all. You can be there on that basis. But how much more the Lord's going to appreciate the guests that he have there, as there who at least try to pay him back a little bit, huh? Those that try to do a little something for him. Huh? Those that try to show their appreciation, their gratitude by loving him and loving others and witnessing and winning souls. Do you think he's going to appreciate them a lot more? Yes, he is, because heaven is a place of reward and degrees and there's going to be a difference in heaven. It is not a classless society. There are going to be some people that get what they deserve. Everybody's going to get what they deserve. Whether you deserve contempt or you deserve reward. Whether you deserve to shine or lack luster. You're going to get what you deserve. Of course, you know, he's not going to reward you according to your iniquity. Or he pay you according to your sins. Thank God for that. He's promised that. Those are forgiven. But he's going to reward you according to what you did for him. And if you didn't do much for him, then there'll be no reward. And those people are going to be shamed, ashamed, really, throughout all eternity. There may not be any pain or death or sorrow and uh, hunger and so on, but for some people there's going to be shame and contempt because they failed God, and it looks like the vast majority of church people are going to be in that shape. Huh? Yeah, that's right. Praise God. Just thought of an idea that, that probably that's, you know, have you said that only the second one will say, well, that's probably why they have gates. Twelve gates. Who in the world's going in and out? Who the heaven's going in and out of those gates, anyhow? Now, where are they going? What for? Seems like if you live in a town like that, you never want to leave. Where the walls are made and the streets are made of pure crystal transparent gold. Wow. Don't give me ideas, boys. They're all gonna wear robes of righteousness, even if you can see through the walls. Transparent walls. <laughs> oh, no, I don't <laughs> Besides, you're going to be supernatural, superhuman, <laughs> absolutely. Not going to need to go to bed at night or anything else. Well, let's get it out. Right. Wow. And can you imagine? No. Can you imagine 12 levels, 1,500 miles high, 
each level a solid diamond or a ruby or an amethyst and so on. Hmm? Well, the interpretation of that is actually 12. No. Twelve levels. I don't know. Maybe that's according to the, how you did down here, what level you live on. And, of course, there's lots of room on your level because uh, every level is over 100 miles high. Every level is over 100 miles high. There are 12 levels, 1,500 miles. 12 into 1,500, what do you get? Okay, you got 125 miles of the level then, huh? What is this? I don't even know what you're talking about. Well, we had a study on the Holy City of New Jerusalem one of these nights. Uh, well, I know what the Bible says. That's all I know. Now, what shape do you think it is if it's 1,500 miles wide, 1,500? Well, we're sure getting a long way from the Baptist and the Holy Spirit. We'll have to say that some other time, huh? It says it's four square, but that means only necessary at the bottom. That doesn't mean it has to be square at the top. I've seen a lot of buildings now, built nowadays that were square at the bottom and round on top. Have you seen those? Oh, yeah. New type of building, square at the bottom, and they come up to a dome. And then the, uh, the Egyptians, they built some buildings that were square at the bottom, but how were they shaped? They were pyramidical. You could even have a square building and come up conically in a cone to the top. Doesn't tell us exactly what shape the, the building itself is going to be, except it's got a square bottom, that's all we know. And that it's just as high as it is broad and long. Wow, what a town, huh? Twelve gates. And every one of those gates is one single gigantic pearl. One beautiful, great, big pearl. Now, pearls are pretty solid, so apparently you can go through pearl. Goes with pearls. The gate, three gates on each side of the city. Pearly gates. One single pearl. Some great pearl. Well, that's beautiful. But we were on the matter of Thomas and the Holy Spirit. Let's finish that because our class is about over here. We two hours is usually my ordinary limit for a class because it's not always usually. <laughs> You don't believe it just because of last week. That was a special convention. It is gone. Anybody that has Jesus has a spirit. Amen. Because nobody can say Jesus is the Lord. Somebody has Jesus the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. We're back in First Corinthians 12 chapter. Now there are diversity of gifts for the same spirit. Four verse. Different kinds of gifts, right? He names at least nine. There are probably a lot more. I know of others. Some people seem to have a gift of vision. A lot of other things. I don't know. Maybe classify that in knowledge or you know, something. But if so, there's sure a lot of variety of these gifts. There are differences of administrations. With the same law. Different ways in which they're given. One person has uh, tongues in a certain way. Another person has tongues another way. Right? In fact, they may have different tongues, and some have tongues of men, and some tongues of angels, heavenly tongues, unknown tongues, and known tongues. And uh, some speak in Chinese, French, and a lot of other things, and others speak in some other language. I've heard people speak in Greek, and Hebrew, and French, and a lot of languages in the Spirit. I never studied a word of it. I had to work hard for mine. They just spot it off. Without ever having studied it by the Spirit. My mother spoke in Spanish once upon a time by the Spirit. I knew three girls that sang in Japanese by the Spirit. Because there were 500 Japanese sailors sitting there listening and didn't know any English. 
That's wonderful. You can yeah, thank you. Yeah. Speak the language you ought to pray when you're trying to witness to those French people. God could come by and down by his spirit and help you speak beautiful French. Amen. Now, of course, if you haven't got any guts, you're not even trying to learn and you're not doing any studying at all, uh, you ought to try to work at it a little bit. Don't be like that guy that uh, I found out sitting behind a tent by where they spoke no English at all and they studied uh, enough to try to get by. And they always appreciated the fact that I could speak a little bit of their language. They'd always smile, even sometimes laugh. <clears throat> my <laughs> grammar and <laughs> syntax and everything else but they appreciated it just the same that I tried I made an effort to speak their language so uh, you might try it a little bit but he's not talking about that he's talking about supernaturally getting a tongue or a language beautifully and <clears throat> but there are different ways in which they're given different ways in which they operate six verse but the same God now, I'll mind you, different gifts, different ways in which they're given, and different ways in which they operate. Well, we don't know how many different ways they're given. If there are only nine gifts according to this, even if there were as many as nine different ways they were given, then nine different ways each of those nine different uh, gifts that were given were operating, well, you'd sure, how far would that take us, Brother Matthew? Who's the mathematician? Mm -hmm. Uh, take us to the ninth power. Three times to the ninth power, remember? How much is that? Is that what it is? Come on, some of you guys went to college. Well, there's about 729 varieties, even if, if that were the case. So don't try to pour God into a mold in a box and say he's got to operate this way, that way, or the other way. There's a lot of variety in the Lord. All kinds of variety. Some of the Pentecostals try to pour him in a box this way and say he's got to operate this way. The Baptists, they try to pour him in a box and say he's got to operate that way. And uh, the Presbyterians, they got the boxes and no spirit at all. <laughs> Most of them. <laughs> Oh, some of them are saved, and even have met a few of the spirits. But uh, God, where there is, where the spirit is, there is liberty, freedom. God refuses to be poured into a mold and do it your way. He is free. There is liberty, and there is an infinite variety of ways God can operate. Praise the Lord. There is only one way to be saved. Only one salvation, only one Savior. But when it comes to working for Jesus, there's all kinds of variety. You can do all kinds of things for the Lord. And the Holy Spirit can give you all kinds of gifts, all kinds of ways, and working in all kinds of manners to serve the Lord in every conceivable way. Beautiful. But, but, son, when the manifestation of the Spirit is given to whom? Every man. Every man. To profit with all. Every man. Every single one of you has some gift of the Spirit. To profit with all. What's your gift? You know? You know what your gift is? Well, praise God. I'm going to find out right now. <laughs> 